ESPN's Tom Luganbill is with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. You will see him this weekend as he gives you Texas at Oklahoma State 230 ABC, one of the better games on the board this it week. It is, yeah. What is up, Lugs? How are you? How are we doing, lads? Everything going well? Everything's going well. A lot of upset fans in, in this part of the country, as you could imagine. Yeah. Uh, l- let me start here, and I'm going to steal what might have been a question from Dunaway, and I'll apologize to him in advance, but he has brought up the theory that Alabama secondary has shown they can get confused a lot. They did against Texas. They did against Tennessee. And it's what worries him about some of the passing quarterbacks down the stretch. Maybe a Will Rogers Saturday night, a Jackson Dart on down the line. Do you see another offense that Alabama will play that can strain the secondary the way Texas and Tennessee have done? Well, I I certainly think that Mississippi State is capable of doing it if they don't become ultra one-dimensional. You know, when when you look – at how people, many people have decided to defend Mississippi State is they try to dare Mike Leach to do what he doesn't want to do, and that's run the football. And then when you go and you look at how Arkansas tried to play Mississippi State, they tried to rush three, drop eight. Well, guess what? Mike Leach says, we're going to rush the ball 37 times. Yes, that number's correct. All right, and, and you're sitting there going, what? wait, what? So I think it has to do with the overall offense's balance that the defense – for Alabama is going to be taking on. Um, Will Rogers can carve you apart. I don't think you want to play a lot of man-to-man defense, and you ever do against the air raid. But I don't know if they're going to have the balance of, of say, a Tennessee um, or, you know, the dynamic. They're not having to worry about the quarterback being a threat as a runner. And I think that's a big component in their preparation uh, against the Mississippi State or others, for that matter. Um, Jackson Dart's a good athlete. Um, but he's, you know, certainly, you know, he's not a guy like Kyler Murray or, or, or Bryce Young. And so I think that takes some strain off of the defense a bit. Yeah. But Ole Miss was the one I was concerned about down the stretch a, because it's a road game and and that's where Alabama struggled, but also because their, their run game is so dynamic that it may, it may make their passing game better force Alabama to, you know, sort of have to, uh, uh, to go after protecting that run defense. Yes, because you're referencing Zach Evans and the freshman uh, Winshawn Judkins, yeah. who is an absolute nightmare. Just seeing him in person from the field level against Georgia Tech last month, I mean, he is going to be an absolute difference maker. You could make an argument that Old Miss, now we're going to see them down the stretch with their schedule, and they're going to get challenged far more than they have to this point. But if there was ever a team that won the offseason transfer portal sweepstakes, it was Ole Miss. Lane Kiffin and the staff – deserve a ton of credit because they've hit on just about every guy that's making a difference for that team on both sides of the ball. But what I think Ole Miss has to worry about, even though they're playing at home against a team like Alabama is Jackson Dart for all of his athletic gifts can get too caught up in those athletic gifts. And it leaves him, uh, it leads him to make poor decisions with the football, make risks with the football, throw the ball up for grabs. And I don't think you can afford to do that against Alabama, even if you're at home. So um, is he a good enough athlete to hurt you with his legs? Do they have the two running backs next to him? Yes. But if he starts making bad decisions with the ball, that's going to be an advantage for Alabama. And, and, And guys, at the end of the day, we can talk all we want about future opponents, who the quarterback is. Are there problems in the defensive back end for Alabama? Well, we can reference all those things. But what we should be referencing is sloppy play. I mean, 17 penalties, all right? Procedure penalties, kicking game woes, you know, things that I always reference is uncharacteristic to Alabama's nature. You guys have heard me say this a hundred times. If the personnel is not on equal footing, you need to play your best game, and then Alabama needs to help you out. It's exactly what took place in Knoxville. And I'm not taking anything away from from, uh, Tennessee, but at the end of the day, they made fewer errors than Alabama did. Hey, and before Ole Miss, though, Lugan Bill, they've got to go to Baton Rouge to take on LSU, and LSU's only got one loss in the SEC West right now. Yeah. I think they personally beat Ole Miss at home this week. We'll see what happens there. But what do you read into LSU? I mean, to be able to bust out 45 points on the road, Jaden Daniels played his best game as a college player. Uh, yeah. This, t- this team's it, – it, they're kind of inconsistent, but they're kind of scary at the same time. Yeah, they're the Jekyll and Hyde of the SEC, not just the East or the West – the conference overall, and they're scary because they have athletes, right? I mean, for, for they're going through a transitional phase, new coaching staff, new approach, head coach that's uh, it's won everywhere that he's been. You've got transfer portal players. You mentioned the quarterback in Jaden Daniels. They have not one, 
but two true freshmen starting at each offensive tackle spot. All right. And then the defensive side of the football for them, the strength is in their front seven. So you have a chance each and every week. For me, with LSU, it's about consistency. They'll take the field and have athletes to compete with anybody that they take on. I think including in Alabama. But are they as good of a football team as the opponents they'll be taking on? And that remains to be seen each and every week. Boy, I love your game, Texas and Oklahoma State, because with, yeah, good with, one. with Quinn Ewers, uh, that is such a fun offense to watch with Bijan and, and Xavier at wide receiver. But here's Oklahoma State coming off the L. Uh, I thought that was the best team in the league. Now what do you make of Oklahoma State, and what do you think of that game? Well, Oklahoma State, a couple of things to take away so far this year for Oklahoma State. They have not effectively run the football to the level that I think that they were anticipating. Essentially, their offense is Spencer Sanders. And if Spencer Sanders is banged up or injured or he has a bad day, they're in trouble. They've got one wide out that can take the top off of the defense. Everybody else is, is just kind of a guy, which you don't generally expect from an Oklahoma State football team. So getting the run game going, consistently going, is going to help Spencer Sanders be um, at his best. And then defensively, this this was a team that has not tackled well each of the last really two weeks. You go back to Texas Tech, they did not tackle well. They ended up winning the game 41-31, did not have a great defensive effort, did not tackle well on the perimeter against TCU at all in, in terms of the quick screen and some of those things where a guy's catching it for a two-yard gain, you miss a tackle, it ends up being a 15-yard gain. And those things have plagued Derek Mason's group uh, on defense. But the one thing they have, it's a difficult place to play in Stillwater, and you have a team in Texas that while they pulled it out last week, and by the way, I think that would have been a game that they would have lost last year in the fashion that they won it against Iowa State last week, but we still have a program in Texas that's learning how to handle winning learning how to handle success, learning how to deal with people talking big, talking good about them, and then going out and not laying an egg. They have not proven to be able to consistently do that throughout the course of the season. And I think that's where Steve Sarkeesian is trying to make the biggest strides. And Texas has had success in Stillwater, but this would be a huge, huge win for Steve Sarkeesian in that program just to show that they can handle you know, people talking good about them. Uh, more than any uh, president, AD, or uh, the commissioner of the Big 12, Mike Gundy has been the guy that's held Texas and Oklahoma's feet to the fire about bailing on the Big 12 and going to the SEC. Do you think that's a storyline at all? Because this is the first, you know, real showdown in Stillwater of Texas coming to town since that yeah. decision was made. I, I don't think so because I don't think it's anything personal towards a Steve Sarkeesian or any member of the staff or any player on that team because they don't make any of those decisions. They're just going to work every day and, and doing a job. And it's been my experience with Mike Gundy that and you guys have seen him up at the podium. You've seen him in press conferences. He's a no-nonsense guy. He worries about what he can control, doesn't worry about what he can't control, shows up to work each and every day and just does his job. I mean, it, the, the steady level of consistency from him – what you see is what you get. It's how his team has played. He's got one of the longest standing tenures as, as a successful head coach that we have in this sport right now. So he may look at the Texas departure over to the SEC as being something he's not fond of, but I don't think he allows it to get personal with any member of the University of Texas because what's that going to do to help him win games? ESPN's Tom Luganville, who you will see on that Texas-Oklahoma State game, 2.30 ABC, with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Luke's is presented each week by ATIX. Uh, your ticket into Alabama's homecoming game Saturday night against Mississippi State is right there at ATIX, 822-7382, 822-7382, or aaatix.com. They are uh, roughly a two-touchdown underdog, Syracuse. But they are one of the last challengers for Clemson. Is there anything the Orange can do on the road in Death Valley you think that gives Clemson trouble? Well, if they keep playing error-free, and for the most part they have done that, they've gotten out-of-sight play from quarterback Garrett Schrader. And you can make an argue, argument that Dino Babers made the two most important hires in college football this offseason when he lured Robert and I and Jason back away from Virginia. If you watched Virginia the last couple of years and you saw what Brennan Armstrong was doing, they've fallen apart in Charlottesville. Now, all of a sudden, they've completely resurrected this offense under Dino Babers at Syracuse. It's a defining game, I think, for, for both programs, really. You've got an ascending Clemson that's completely exceeded expectations at the quarterback position, and they're heading in the right direction. And then you've got this surprising Syracuse team that I think everybody is doubting each and every week and waiting for them to falter. 
if they were to go down to Clemson and win this game, wouldn't be surprised at all. If they go down to Clemson and they lose this game, I don't think it will be a blowout. I think they're too competitive. They're playing too good of football. And this thing could come down to a one or two possession game late in the fourth quarter. If, if in my opinion, Syracuse doesn't afford Clemson any gifts because there is going to be a discrepancy in overall talent profile between these two rosters, and it's an awfully difficult place to play there in Death Valley. Uh, Luganville, another undefeated that seems to be in trouble. UCLA heads to Austin to take on Oregon this week, and outside of that week one, you know, just shellacking against Georgia, Oregon yeah. is starting to find that rhythm offensively. Seems like a bad spot for UCLA. I don't know who it's really a bad spot for because right now UCLA is doing the same thing, right? I mean, UCLA and Oregon are just on this upward trajectory, and then you see what USC – did in the loss in Rice Eccles Stadium against Utah. I look at the, the, this Oregon and this really more UCLA is they're kind of they're they're trending in an upward direction where both teams can get what they want, all right, depending on the outcome for the most part, because you're gonna have some turbulence throughout the top bottom portion of the conference. But this will come down to whether or not it's Bonex or it's Dorian Thompson Robinson that makes mistakes. They're both playing at such a high level right now. Both teams are playing well in the offensive line. I like, I like UCLA's power run game a little bit more than I like Oregon, but I don't think we've yet identified the flying saucer and the alien uh, that came down and stole Bo Nix and returned some other individual. <laughs> we're looking into, we're, we're, we're currently looking into that, uh, but he's playing out of his mind. He deserves a lot of credit. So this is going to come down to errors. Because I think these two teams are really, really evenly matched. And in those types of games, the little margin of error is the difference. Hey, forget the aliens. I just think he's playing behind the best offensive line with the best receivers he's had in his career, my opinion. Probably so. Um, yeah, probably uh, so. One, one question i got to ask you. Uh, can Sonny Dykes st stick the landing at TCU halfway through the season? Um, they, they, they can win a Big 12 championship. Can they do it in the back half of the season? We're going to find out because I think this is where their depth will be challenged significantly going forward. You know, that's also a team that lost some players, some significant players. Kari Coleman, one of them was one of the, the big 12 leaders in sacks a year ago. He's now playing linebacker for Ole Miss. And so they're a football team that Max Duggan is playing out of his mind. I think he's playing in a way that people were never expecting him to. They also lost Zach Evans, right, who's now playing at Ole Miss. They've been able to replace him. And they've got a difference maker in Quentin Johnston at, uh, out wide. If you guys haven't seen that wide receiver, man, he is an absolute difference maker. I don't know what to make of that conference, though. One week you think Baylor's going to be the team. One week you think Oklahoma State's going to be the team. Then you think, well, look, is Texas for real? And you start to question yourself. And then TCU comes out of nowhere. It's nuts. And so, so much football to be played. And I think any given Saturday in that particular conference, anybody goes down. ESPN's Tom Lukeville. You'll see him on Texas, Oklahoma State, 230 ABC. I did watch the first episode last night of Echoes, the show you told us about on Netflix. What do you think? Uh, it's, 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 you're right. You're going to have to pay close attention. I could tell already. Yeah. You're going to have to pay yeah. super close attention. But I'm going to give yeah, you a chance. I, I, and by the way, uh, I think the new uh, Taylor Sheridan series on Paramount Plus with Stallone uh, playing a mobster, the Tulsa King, I think, that's, I think that gets released sometime this week. I don't know if you guys have heard yeah, of that I'm one. excited about that one, yeah. Yeah, okay. Definitely. Tulsa Definitely. King. Latest. Yeah, stick with Echoes. Okay, all right. We'll, 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 we'll check out Echoes. I'll let you know next week. All right, see Lugabell, right. 230 ABC, Texas, Oklahoma State, and we'll see you next Monday, Luke, or next Wednesday, Luke. What is today? Wednesday. There you go. Thank you. That's see it. you. See you guys. All right. All right. ESPN's Tom Lukeville with us. Courtesy of ATIX, AAATIX.com is the website. AAATIX.com, 822-7382. Your ticket into homecoming in Tuscaloosa right there at ATIX. All the upcoming Alabama and Auburn games, including the Iron Bowl on down the road. ATIX, 822-7382.